So I'm gonna make a video today about checking this hard rock ore to see if it contains any values. Obviously it looks like it's got some copper in it. Sometimes tin and silver run with copper. That's what I'm interested in finding out. And so what I'm gonna do is crush a whole bucket of it. Because um, I'm kind of interested to see what we have here. And then I'm gonna subject this to some testing. I'm gonna run some of it on a wave table. I have an RP4 shaker table. I'm going to do some chemical testing on some of it. And I'm going to do a torch assay. And so I'm going to post these videos on YouTube. Now all of the things that I'm talking about doing are pretty dangerous. This is not stuff you should try at home. So the <clears throat> impact mill that I have is a 6.5 horsepower impact mill and I have the front plate of it off because I need to clean some of the stuff out of it. This is a homemade job here. One of the problems with this mill is that stuff gets trapped in the bottom right there. But the purpose of this plate is so this goes on the front right so this goes on the front and you can drop in up to a four inch piece of rock or, or, or whatever it is you're crushing. And then it comes down through this, and I've told, tied an old pair of pants to it to cut down on the dust. And I'm gonna be putting that stuff in this bucket. So you drop the, the, the rocks in, obviously, and they fall down and they strike this plate here where this arm comes around and whacks them. Gives them a nice good whack. And they break apart on the inside surface of this, this mill. And they go out that hole right there. I wish the uh, openings on that were quite a bit smaller because it does let some larger pieces through. For the most part, you get about 80 to 85 percent of that bucket right there is going to get turned into 100 to 200 mesh powder, and I'm going to have to rerun the rest of the stuff so that I have a nice consistent product to put on the table and a nice consistent product to do some testing. Clean this thing out pretty good in between running samples if you if you're testing because you don't want to introduce contaminants. I made the mistake of running printed circuit boards through this thing in kind of an experiment to see what would happen, and then I ran ore in it. And even though I had thought I had cleaned it out well enough, it turns out that I did not clean it out well enough, in fact, that the printed circuit boards contain precious metals and rare earth elements, and those things contaminated my hard rock sample. And taking this thing apart and putting it back together is a little bit of a time-consuming pain in the butt. I think I'm going to pick up a smaller mill to do testing. 
The other thing is you'll probably notice that most of this stuff is bigger than four inches. And I don't have a jaw crusher. So I'm gonna have to break it apart for the camera. That's also fairly tedious. Prospecting is a lot of work. So obvious. If you want to wear safety goggles, which I am, thank you. This is, of course, the hard way to do this. But it works. See, look at all that yumminess. Some nice colored material in there. Don't know what it is, but I'm gonna find out. Chances are it's just iron. Look at some of that yumminess. Lots and lots of copper in this stuff.
You can see how all that crap gets packed in there. Make a noise like it was busting. Apparently, it's not busted. So you get a bunch of stuff that looks like this. And if I'm going to do this on any kind of scale, I need a better crusher. Because this thing is just too unreliable. Like I said, it's a homemade contraption. I thought for sure I screwed the bearing up. But this is definitely thin enough stuff to run on a shaker table. And of note, you shouldn't handle it more like that. It has arsenic and other shit in it that you probably just shouldn't handle. But, like I said, don't do what I do.